Hey, good morning, church. How's everybody? All good? If you're, if you're good, say yoo-hoo. Oh, dude, we got a party going on here this morning. Hey, my name is Sean. I'm one of the pastors here, and uh, it's my honor to welcome you this morning. If you're a guest, a uh, special word of welcome to you. Uh, actually, if this is your first time at BCC, we have a gift for you at our Welcome Center, and we'd love for you to pop over there and grab that. Um, you'll also notice um, that in the chairs, we've got these little cards, and on one side will say prayer, and the other side connect. And if you've got any prayer requests, we have a team that prays during the service. They'll pray over your prayer request. So you can fill that out. Or you can do it anonymous or put your name on it. It's totally up to you. Um, and we will pray for you and through the week as well. So we'd love that. And you can just lift that up or we'll see. Uh, there'll be a, an usher walk by with the, holding his hand up like this. You can just hand it to him. Or you can drop it in the box back there. And that would be great. But yeah, we, we are a praying church. And so we'd, we'd love to pray for whatever's going on in your life. Man, I'm just, I'm just glad you joined us today. You know, it's... Um, it's a big weekend, Memorial Weekend, right? And so I know that, uh, that for all of us, it means something different, Memorial Weekend. Um, I just want to acknowledge, like, if you're here this morning and man, your heart is heavy, your heart is, you know, there's, there's something, somebody that you're thinking about right now, I just want you to know my heart is with you too. And, uh, and, and I'm sorry for your pain. I'm, so, I'm sorry for your hardship uh, in that. But we, we do remember our loved ones over the course of this weekend. Some of those we've lost in, in battle, some of those, you know, just in general in life. So um, it's hard for me to say happy Memorial Weekend, you know, it's kind of a tough one. Uh, but, but I want you to know, like, I just want to acknowledge that I understand that you're here. And this is a good place to come with, your, with a heavy heart. And I'll tell you why. Um, we, we serve a God who understands. You know, we serve a God who who knows what you're thinking and what you're feeling right now. And he sympathizes with you, you know. Um, when Jesus walked around and on this earth, he, he went to go visit his friends who had lost their brother. And their heartache made him cry. The shortest, shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. So he, he feels your pain and he, and he sympathizes with you and he has empathy for you. And so this is a good place to come and, and, and bring that heartache this morning, okay? So what are we going to do today? We're going we're gonna to worship, um, and then one of our elders, uh, Drew, is going to come and he'll share um, for our communion time today, and we'll take communion together. And we're going to worship some more, and I'm going to come back, and, uh, and I've got a message that I hope is encouraging for you uh, this morning uh, that you can take home with you. And, um, and uh, yeah, I'm just so grateful that you're here. If you're online, folks, hi. It's nice to see you. I'm so glad you've joined us as well. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's stand together, and then I'd like to pray over our gathering. Father God, we, we thank you for this opportunity to, to worship you. I thank you for this opportunity to dig into your word this morning. Thank you for this opportunity to take communion together, to remember your sacrifice on the cross for, for us, and we thank you for that. Uh, Father, thank you for this church family, Lord, uh, a church family that celebrates together and, and mourns together, and does life together, and we just thank you, Father, that we have a family that we can call ours, and I'm so grateful for everybody who has joined us this morning. Father, I pray for those in this house this morning or those online who have heavy hearts today. Father, I pray, Lord, that you, you'll speak life into those hearts, that you will encourage those hearts, that you will comfort those who are, are mourning and hurting right now. Father, will you be with the families who have lost loved ones? Will you encourage them and build them up, Father, as only you can? And we know that you're the God of all comfort. So thank you, Father, for just, for just your nature and just being you. And, uh, will you guide us and lead us and bless us this morning? Uh, I love you. And thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's worship, okay?
take a seat. Morning. My name's uh, Drew Varland. I'm one of the elders here at Vernal Christian Church. And good morning. Good morning. Uh, so we uh, here at VCC take communion every week, and uh, my message, uh, communion message, first service. Um, I'm not doing second service. It's going to be kind of off the cuff and from my heart this service uh, because we had a great message for service and you're going to hear it here and it's it's about being encouraging and um, I just was convicted that uh, what I talked about with communion first service was not encouraging (laughs) so I'm just uh, uh, telling you guys and worship team uh, they were here first service so sorry about that and uh, but uh, anyway uh, uh, you can read in First Corinthians or the Gospels or the Book of Acts, uh, uh, you know, about communion, uh, and and basically it's uh, Jesus, you know, with uh, his uh, disciples. He broke the bread. Um, it said, representing his body, you know, do this and take this and do this in remembrance of me. And it's the same with the uh, the, the the cup, the wine, the juice that we serve here. Uh, represents uh, the blood that he shed, the new covenant for us. And uh, as Christians, I think most of us know that. Uh, but the thing is that it's do this in remembrance of me. Well, when we remember Jesus as Christians and what he did, the gospel, I mean, that's the ultimate uh, definition of love, Right? Are there Christians in here this morning? All right, all right, okay, let's see. Are you thankful for what Christ has done for you? Is your life different than it was uh, prior to uh, making Jesus your your Lord? All right, all right. So it says in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, it says, uh, Rejoice always. Are, are we joyful for what Christ has done for us? Pray continuously. Do we pray in the name of Jesus Christ? Okay. Um, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's what First Thessalonians five sixteen through 18 says. So, um, as we take communion this morning, uh, the ushers are going to be bringing it up. We have two cups. They're stacked. The bread that, that represents the body of Christ, broken body of Christ, and then the juice, which, again, represents his blood that he shed for the new covenant. So when you're served elements, take time and be thankful for what Christ has done, done for you in your lives. Amen? All right. So let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, um, I pray in the name of Jesus, and I am so thankful for what you have done um, in my life, Father, that uh, you sent your Son to die for me, to cover my sin. Not nothing that I did. It's just a free gift from you, and thank you so much. So as I t- we take this communion this morning, uh, we do this in remembrance of you, Lord, you're our Savior. We love you. Thank you so much. And in Jesus' name, amen.
come true all of the things I thought I wanted don't come close to knowing you now that I'm yours and you are mine a love is the secret that I find I spend forever
Peace. All right. So we are in week four. I'm going to scoot up here. We are in week four of our series called Overflow. And uh, it's been a fun series. And uh, the big idea of the series is that, that God blesses us, that God provides to us all kinds of things, you know, for our lives. And, and the idea is that He gives that to us so that they can overflow into the lives of the people around us. He gives us more than we need so that we will share graciously what he has given us, right? And so um, this week, what we're doing is we're having a look at uh, overflowing with encouragement because God is a God of encouragement. He encourages our hearts. He encourages our lives. Uh, but he doesn't encourage us so that we will just hang on to it and just be encouraged ourselves. He, he wants us to bless those around us. I'm going to share a passage with you I read this week that blew my mind. It's absolutely beautiful. It's found in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. And then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that beautiful? That's, that's your God. That's my God. He, he blesses us. He, he pours himself into us so that we will overflow with that hope and that joy and that peace that he pours into us, you know. It's so encouraging. And, and I hope that there's somebody here this morning that, that needs encouragement because, man, this is the God who's going to encourage you today. And, and here's the thing. If we will grab this, if we will learn this, if we will understand this, then the people around us who need encouragement, man, they will feel the encouragement. They will hear the encouragement. They will experience the encouragement of God. Why? Because it's overflowing from us into them. Why is that important? Well, that's important because every person that you meet is facing some sort of a battle in their life. I don't care who it is. I don't care how good it looks on the outside. There's something inside that every human being is battling with. There's a battle going on. I, I could ask for a show of hands. Who's had some sort of a struggle in the last 30 days? And if you didn't raise your hands, you'd, you'd be not trailing the truth because there's something in your life. There's something in my life, right? And we need encouragement. And, and so God gives us this encouragement. A couple of weeks ago, I preached on uh, Mother's Day on the overflow of kindness. And that evening, my, my friend Petra sent me a text, and she said, Hey, today's sermon goes hand in hand with a movie that we're watching called uh, Man Called Otto. Anyone seen it? It's so good. It's a tearjerker. Thank you very much. You know, sitting there watching this movie, and, and just, man, it was beautiful. But here's what I learned so many lessons. But he, this guy, his name's Otto. He's as grumpy as grumpy gets. He's the guy who will turn you into the Homes Association, right? He's that guy. He's the one who thinks everyone else is an idiot, you know? He's the only non-idiot in the world. But what we don't know about him, when you see him on the outside, but what you don't know about him is, man, he's bitterly unhappy. He's got some serious struggles, right? He has suffered deep heartbreak in his life. He's, his wife had passed away six months previously to cancer, so he's hurting, he's, he's struggling, he's, he's having a hard time, right? And then this, this family moves into the neighborhood, and, and the wife, her name's Marisol, she's just unusually friendly and encouraging. <laughs> she, she chooses to look past this grumpy guy, and she loves him unconditionally. And she serves him, and I'm not going to spoil the movie for you, but i got to tell you, man, she changed his life. She gave him reasons to live. She gave him this knowledge that his life actually mattered. He had tried several times to, to end his life, 
unsuccessfully. He couldn't even do that very well, you know. But she spoke life into him. And he discovered his life actually matters. Why? Just, just because of encouragement. And guys, we all need that. Come on, you need that. I need that, right? And we live in such a negative world, man. You just open up your social media feed. Ugh. The news apps. Oh, you're kidding me. Talk to people. So There's so much disheartening negativity in the world because life is hard, man. And, and on top of that, our world is polarized. Like, people don't get along. They don't, they don't you know, there's, there's hate, hateful actions and language and things going on in people's lives. And it's just such a hard thing. And here's what I want to say. Listen, I think it's time that, that us, the, the believers, the followers of Jesus, I think it's time that we step up and we share that hope and that peace and that joy that's inside of us, and we encourage those around us. Don't you think that's a good idea? Let's do that, guys. Come on. That's what I'm thinking. I, I feel like it's time for us to do that, to start to encourage the world around us with our words, with our actions. We can lift others up. We can speak words of encouragement into their lives. You have no idea God might do through a single word of encouragement because our words have power, don't they? They have power. If you guys, if you guys read the story of Job in, in the Old Testament, if you haven't, I'll give you a little synopsis. His name's Job. He's, he's a good man. He's a godly man. And then the enemy, Satan, attacks this poor guy and robs him of more than you can imagine. I mean, he loses it all. His family, his wealth, his health, all of it gone, right? And, and he's, man, he's struggling. He needs some encouragement. He needs some words of encouragement. He, he needs somebody to speak life into him, right? But instead of encouragement, you know what he gets from his friends? He, he gets people, man, they're picking on him. They get up in his face and they're like, hey, it's your fault, man. You deserve it. You brought this on yourself, you know. And instead of being compassionate, they, they lay down the law. And, and instead of building him up in his heartache, they destroy him. With their words. This negative thing, man, that's, that's common in our lives, isn't it? I love how Job responded to them. In Job 16 verse 2, he said, I have heard all of this before. What miserable comforters you are. He calls them out. He's like, you guys are miserable comforters, man. Maybe you've got friends like that. They're like, instead of lifting you up and encouraging you, they get in your face, right? Well, Job says they're miserable comforters, but he's not done with them. He, he goes on in verse 3. He says, won't you ever stop blowing hot air? What makes you keep on talking? Come on, Job. He's telling them, right? Verse 4, he says, I could say the same things if you were in my place. I could spout off criticism and shake my head at you. I love what he says next. He says, but if it were me, but if it were me, I would encourage you. I would try to take away your grief. If it were me, I would speak life into you, buddy. That's what you need. If it were me, I would do it different, right? I would, I would be an encouragement to you. Why? Because the words we speak, they're, they're filled with power. And our words can either build people up or they can crush them. Proverbs 18 says the tongue can bring death or life. Now, I don't know about you guys. Let me just pause there for a second and just tell you that when, when this guy brings a, a sermon, right, it's not because this guy's got, got it all together, okay? <laughs> I'm learning, too. And so if you're like, yeah, you're not very encouraging yourself, buddy. Yeah, okay, that's why I'm preaching this message, right? This is for me and for you, okay? So, so just, just know, like, I don't have this down yet. I'm working on it, but, but I, do, I want this. I want my words to build people's faith. I want to strengthen confidence. I want, I want my words, listen, I want my words to remind you that God is with you, that God is for you, that God loves you. I want my words to remind you of that. I want you to know that. I want to be an encouragement to you. 
I, I, I want you to know that God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you, and He's working in you. See, if it were up to me, I, I would encourage you and build your faith. Why? Because I know you're facing a battle in your life. Now you're like, how do you know that? I, I just know it. We're all facing a battle in our lives, right? Maybe that's why the author to the Hebrews says this in Hebrews 3. But encourage one another daily, as long as it's called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Encourage one another. And, and he doesn't say encourage one another every now and then or, or when the Spirit leads you. No, he says daily. Every day. And why? Why should we encourage one another daily? Because, man, we're in a battle. And, and, and we can get hard-hearted. And we can get angry, right? Why? Because that's what sin does. It hardens us. Sin's deceitfulness. Because sin lies and, and sin distracts and sin destroys and sin tears down. And sin tells you, man, you don't have this and you don't have that. And sin tells you you'll never be happy. You won't measure up, right? And so we need encouragement. To face that, because that's a challenge for every one of us every day. But we need to start believing that there is hope in our lives. And if we don't have encouragement, we won't believe that. So it turns out that it's pretty normal to be discouraged. Listen, I, I face discouragement every single day, without fail, every day. If that's disappointing to you that your pastor gets discouraged every day, I'm so sorry, okay? I'm just telling you it's the truth. I have these voices in my head. You're, you're not good enough. You're never going to measure up, buddy. You don't, deserve, you, you, you don't deserve to be doing what you're doing. You're not qualified. You're, you're not this. You're not that. So I have these voices in my mind. And then every now and then I have real voices like from people also reminding me of the same thing, you know? And eventually you start believing it, right? I even had someone tell me one day, you know, you, sh you should preach more like uh, Charles Stanley. I'm like, <laughs> Charles Stanley was one of the best preachers in the whole world. It's like telling the, the UN quarterback that he should play like Tom Brady, you know. That's not fair. <laughs> I'm sure they meant well, but I can tell you it's easy to get discouraged, right? And I don't know what it is for you. Like, you've got things in your life too. And it's easy to get discouraged and it's easy to struggle. And it seems like, listen, it seems like it's so difficult to remember something positive, but it's so difficult to forget something that's negative. And so I need encouragement daily, and I know I'm not the only one that you need it too. And so I want to try, this, I'm try, this is for us, right? I want to be more encouraging with my words. And I'm assuming that you probably need encouragement too. And so let's encourage one another daily, as long as it's called today. Okay. Now when I, when I talk about being encouraging, you know, invariably people will think and, and say and go, you know what, that's just not my gift. I'm, I just don't have the gift of encouragement. I have the gift of discernment, you know. It's not encouragement, you know. Well, listen, you, you never had the gift of walking either, okay? But, you, but someone helped you. You stood up and you took some steps and you fell down and you stood up. And eventually you got used to it. You can do that. You and I, we can do that with encouragement. We can learn it. It's, 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 it's something we can learn how to do if we make it a priority. If we make it a priority. So here's a good place to start. Fill this in your notes. If you think something good, say it. Say it. If you think something that might be encouraging about somebody, well, express it to them. Tell them. And the moment you think something positive about someone else, text them or, or call them or, or get up out of your, your booth or whatever and walk over and tell them or wherever you are in your life, you express it. Tell them. Let them know. Reach out to somebody. Write a note. Write a text. You know. These things are, are, they do more than just Facebook, right? They, you can actually call people and let them know that what you're thinking and feeling. There's a brother here at VCC. His name's Craig. You know, this, he texts me almost every morning of my life. And he'll say things like, come on, Sean. I love you, brother. Or, ah, 
have a fantastic day. You don't know how encouraging that is. He thinks it, and so then he just sends it. And he's got no idea. He's blessing my life. Incredible. When you think something good about somebody, let them know. Tell them. Say it. Spray it. Express it. Get it out there, right? Listen, this is not too difficult to do. Seriously. We just got to look for reasons to encourage people. We, we, you, we can't look at life so critical, guys. We've got to look for things in people that are good. And then we need to encourage them with those things. If, you, if you're going through the drive through and you leave and you're hungry now, and, you, you, and the person goes, Hi, ah, thank you so much for coming to Wendy's. Thank you for coming to KFC or whatever. Hey, thanks for the smile. Thanks for being so sweet. Thanks for your help. Hey, you, you're awesome. Good job. You're doing great. It's not going to cost us that much, right, to be encouraging, you know? If you go to the restaurant, tell the server, hey, thank you for taking such good care of us today. It's so easy for us to be critical, man. We da, 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 That restaurant, those people, it's so easy to do that. It takes a little more work, right? But it's actually not that difficult to go, hey, I found something positive today, and I'm going to let you know about what it is, you know? You get on the phone with customer service. Ever done that, you know? This, listen, I've done that job. I've sat there <laughs> with those earphones on, and I've had these people be nasty. Oh, my gosh. When you encourage somebody, you know, this dude sitting in uh, Singapore answering your phone, you know, tell him, hey, nice accent, you know, whatever. <laughs> Give him a compliment, you know. You do your job so well. I'm so glad I got you today. It doesn't cost you anything, but it'll help, you know. Spouses. Man, you, you look so pretty today, honey. You look great, you know. I love, I love how you speak to the kids. There's my man. You go, buddy. Got you. You're good, good for you. Speak words of encouragement, right? How did I get so lucky? Your boss, your employees, find ways to encourage them. Hey, try and get the reputation that Barnabas had in the book of Acts. His name was Joseph, but they called him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Wow. Let's, let's shoot for that, right? Look for ways to encourage others. Your parents. Encourage your parents. Here's one for you. Your in-laws. Give a shot. Try, you know. Find something. How about your neighbor? Encourage your neighbor. Man. Hey, uh, man, I love the attention that you give to, to the yard. I, it's, it's fantastic. We're so blessed to have you guys as neighbors. You're, you're awesome. And you're like, yeah, that'll be a stretch. Okay, find something, right? I like the color of your car. Whatever it is, find something encouraging. Because everyone, every person could do with some encouragement. Because every person, including your grumpy neighbor, is going through something in their lives, right? They're a man named Otto. There's hurt. There's deep hurt. And a little encouragement will go a long way. A little a words of encouragement will really transform somebody's life. So allow the blessing to overflow from within you to those around you, right? Because we all need it. We all need it. Your relationships will be transformed if you'll do that. I was challenged by a pastor that I respect. He, he said this. Say 100 encouraging words for every word that may feel like a criticism. 100 encouraging words for every word that feels like a criticism. Now, that feels impossible until we, we read what Paul says in Ephesians 4. He says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So my pastor friend says 100 to 1. Paul says 100 to none. Like don't let any unwholesome words come out. Only things that build others up. Whoa. See, listen. You don't encourage others for your gain. It's such an unselfish thing to do. You're encouraging someone else for their gain. Look what it says. But only what is helpful for building others up according to what? Their needs. 
They need it. They need it from you that it may benefit those who listen. This is not for you. This is for them. This is being unselfish. This is allowing the encouragement of God to flow out of you into the people right there in front of you. You're building them up. It's a beautiful thing. Your relationships will look and feel different if you will do this. So let's train ourselves, guys, to, to be encouraging in person and online. And you're like, well, how do I know if I'm encouraging online? I'll go back, go read your last 20 posts, and, and you decide, okay, were there 100 encouraging ones to one discourage? You decide. I, it's up to you. But we can do this, guys, 100 times more. How about, how about parents? Now, kids, think about this for a minute. If we, if we said 100 encouraging things for every criticism we had for our kids, yeah, we could be so hard on our children, right? I, I would much rather have my kids, man, overwhelmed with, ah, I think you're awesome, buddy. Hey, you're amazing. Wow, you're smart. You're kind. You're such a wonderful person. You're just beautiful. Instead of nag, 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 nag all the time. I want to tell you something. This is important. When you hear something over and over and over and over again, at some point, you believe it. And then you start acting out on it. And so we get to decide, what is it that we want our kids to believe? Do we want them to believe, you're such a messy thing. You're such a, you're such a lazy bones. You're, you're oh, you, come on, you're smarter than that. Or you, eventually they'll believe it. Speak life 100 times to one. Speak life. I want my kids to know they're amazing. I want, I, want them, I want them to be overconfident because daddy told me that I'm smart and I'm beautiful and I'm kind and I'm loving and I'm wonderful. And if you're going to judge me for that, yes, that's awesome. Do the same thing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Again, I'm preaching to myself, right? Because I don't always do that. I don't always do that. But we can make it a focus, guys. The positive words can literally change the trajectory of someone's life. First Thessalonians 5 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just in fact, as in fact you are doing. Right? There is so much criticism, so much hatred, so much negativity in our world. Guys, man, just some, some positive reinforcement and building others up will go a million miles, I'm telling you. Especially with people who are facing a battle. And we've agreed that's all of us, right? Now, there are times where I've been encouraging. There are times when, when I've shared this message, right? With others. But, but do you find this, maybe you find this too. Like it, sometimes it's easier to encourage somebody else than it is to believe that about yourself, you know? Like you're going through a struggle, and I said, but just have faith, man. Just, just, be, just believe the Lord's going to bring you through it. I can say that, right? And then I go through a struggle, and I forget that myself. I can, I can say to you, man, you know what? Jesus loves you, man. He, he, he's, he's got you. He, you're forgiven. You're loved. And at the same time that I'm saying that to you, in my heart, I'm feeling condemned, and I'm feeling unlovable. And so sometimes... The person that really needs to be encouraged is you. Yes, everything I've told you right now is encourage those around you. But sometimes you just need to turn that internal and encourage yourself. Jesus says, love your neighbor as what? As yourself. You, you've got to have some love for yourself. You've got to give yourself some grace too. You've got to speak words of encouragement to you too, right? It's important. We're going to look at a portion of Scripture, and, and I think there's some tools in here that, that we can get with regards to this self-encouragement, right? So it's found in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30. Uh, some context, so David, he, he's the king of Israel. He's led his troops to war. They're coming back from the battle, and they're getting home to Ziglag. And when they get back to Ziglag, their hometown, there's like this tragedy waiting for them. Terrible thing happened. So, yeah, we start here in verse 1 of 1 Samuel 30. 
David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it, and had taken captive the woman and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept out aloud until they had no strength left to weep. You ever been there? I've been there. David's two wives had been captured, Ahanoan of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. So, so they're off battling. And when they come back, man, the whole place is burned down. All their homes are burned down. Their wives, kids, they've all been kidnapped. They've been taken away. Like they've lost everything. And, and man, they just, they, they're crying, weeping. I mean, distraught. Imagine, right? You could imagine. This is tragic. This is hard. Absolute ruin. Suffering. Heartache. And, and so, here's what happens. Here's what they do. David's men, here's what they do. Verse 6. David was greatly distressed. Why? Be- because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. So they come back. Here's this tragedy. They weep for a while, and then they're like, it's your fault. You're the one who took us to battle. It's you. We're going to stone you. And so, so David's lost his family, and now his men, man, they're coming after him, right? And he's struggling. He's the leader, so he's the one responsible for the whole thing. And what did David do? The next verse says, but David found strength in the Lord his God. So he's getting blamed, he's getting criticized, he's, he's lost, he's, he's has his own loss, right? They're talking about stoning him, and the place that he finds his strength, and the place that he finds his courage is in God, is in the Lord his God. Now that, that phrase, found strength, comes from a Hebrew word, kozak. Can you say kozak? Kozak, yeah. To strengthen oneself, to prevail, to harden to be strong, to become strong, to be courageous, to be firm, to grow firm, to be resolute. That's what it means to find strength, okay? This this implies that you're you're building yourself up. You're talking to yourself. You're strengthening yourself. The King James Version uh, of the same passage says it this way, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. So he encouraged himself. He, he spoke to himself. He spoke faithfulness of God into himself. He preached to himself about the goodness of God. He reminded himself of the provision of God. He, he built himself up in the things of God. And when everything around him said, hopeless, man, smoke, no family, man, aggressive people wanted to hurt him. Everything appeared hopeless. So discouraging. Right there in the middle of that, he finds his hope In God. He builds himself up in God. He reminds himself of who God is. He he gets his Kozak back. Here's what happened. Verse 8. Then then David asked the Lord, Should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, Yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. So God says, Go, go, go. You're going to get it all back. Go. Go. Now, when did he get that word of victory? After he put his faith in God, right? After he turned to the Lord for strength. So first he turned to the Lord for strength, and then God says, go, man, you got this, right? So those positive words of truth, right, are reminding himself that God's got this. So speaking biblical truth to ourselves. Guys, that's way more than positive thinking. No, it's speaking truth, scripture, words of encouragement from God into us so that we don't lose hope, so that the enemy doesn't fill our heads with lies, you know? Because it's a spiritual battle. Second Corinthians 10 says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Here it is. Listen. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient 
to Christ. We take captive those thoughts. So when those negative thoughts come in, we take them captive and we switch that thing around, right? We take that negative thought and we turn it into a positive truth from God's Word. Because, man, we, we can hear negative things. We can hear 10 positive things and we can get one negative thing. And what do we focus on? Of course we do. You do it, I do it. Absolutely. Neurologists tell us that, that your brain, my brain, is predisposed to believe the negative immediately. But when we hear something positive about ourselves, if we focus, it'll take us at least 15 seconds to even entertain believing it. We believe the, the negative right away, no questions asked, but somebody says something positive. You, you, you start, oh, I wonder, what he, wonder what's in for him. I wonder if he really means it. I don't think he truly means it. I don't think she means it. I don't, and we do all of that, right? But if they say something negative, we take it hook, line, and sinker, don't we? Right? So we've got to take our thoughts captive. Why? Because it's so difficult to remember something positive. But it's so difficult to forget something that's negative. That's why what we say to ourselves matters more than you can imagine. Your self-talk, listen, are they words of life? Are they words of faith? Are they words of truth? Or are you speaking words of death and words of hopelessness to yourself? What are you saying? David, he encouraged himself, man. Yeah, everything was falling apart, but he encouraged himself. He talked to himself. He preached to himself, and he built himself up in the Lord, right? And if you want to know what that looks like, go to Psalms. Go read. It's, it's almost like looking at his private journal. You read the words of David, and, and you get a, limp, a glimpse into his own inner dialogue and what's going on inside. He'll speak to himself. He'll say this many times, right? Why are you so downcast, O my soul? Hey, David, why are you so down, bro? What's going on? Hey, what's happening? Why are you depressed? Hey, why are you anxious? What's happening? Why so down? Why, why, why are you discouraged? You know? why, why, why are you nervous? What are you nervous about? What are you afraid about? What's going on? He's talking to himself, right? Why are you so low? He's speaking to himself. He's taking inventory of his emotions. He is taking captive every thought, right? And, and then, then he... And he deals with it with truth. Look at this in Psalm 43. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? He asks himself the question. And then he answers it. Put your hope in God. He's talking to himself. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Why are you depressed? Why are you down? What's going on? Oh, man, I'm going to put my faith in God. The faithfulness, the goodness, the power, the provision of God. I'm putting my faith in God. I'm good to go. Putting my trust in God. He's always with me. He'll never leave me. He's completely for me. Why so downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Now here's what David didn't say. You got this, David. You can do this on your own, buddy. No. You, guys, you and I, we can't do it on our own. Can't. We can't do it on our own. We need God. We've got to speak truth into our hearts and into our minds. We've got to preach to ourselves. So let's practice a little bit. Here we go. You're watching TV, you're watching the news, right? The whole, everything's coming to an end. It's awful, man. You know, the whole political thing, everything. It's the worst thing ever. We're never going to recover. <laughs> preach to yourself. Come on. Preach to yourself. My God is my provider. My God is my protector. My God is good. He's all-powerful. He's ever-present. He knew this before it ever happened. And He's working in all things to bring about good to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. That's the truth. So speak the truth to yourself. It goes without saying, if you don't know the truth, dig into God's Word and, and read the truth so that you know what to say back to yourself, right? Then you hear this voice says, you're a failure. Your relationships, man, they're breaking down. You're, you're never going to do anything meaningful. Hey, go preach to yourself. Come on. No. No. My God is working in me. 
And I trust that God is working in the people around me. No weapon formed against me will ever prosper, ever. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My sins have been forgiven. I am redeemed. I am a child of the living God. I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I am an ambassador of the most high God. I am the highest ranking diplomat sent by God from heaven to represent the love of Jesus on this earth. I am free from the power of sin and death. So those thoughts, go take a hike. Done. Preach to yourself. Preach to yourself. Come on. You're feeling down. You're feeling depressed. You're discouraged. You're afraid. Go preach truth to yourself. Remind yourself, I have the mind of Christ. I am filled with the very spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I am the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for me to do. My sins are completely forgiven. I am a new creation in Christ. Come on. Uh, my sinfulness has been separated from me as far as the east is from the west. I am called by God to be a light in this dark world. I am the salt of the earth. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I'm seated in heavenly places with my Savior Jesus. My God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power. And of love and of sound mind, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Preach to yourself. Come on. (laughs) Speak to yourself. Why so downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God, buddy. Come on. Know it. Say it and believe it, right? Why? Why? Of people of faith walking around acting like we've got no power. Get your Cossack back. Come on. Get it on. Come on. (laughs) Preach truth to yourself. See, out of the overflow of who God is and what He's done for us and the fact that He lives inside of every Christ follower should be a voice of encouragement, should be a voice of faith, should be a voice of truth. To those around you and to yourself. And when the world seems so polarized that there's no, none enough, man, we stand up and we express love and we express grace and we speak words of life, right? Now, yes, let's stand for justice. Let's stand for what's right. Let's do that, right? We're going to do it with love and we're going to do it with truth because it lives inside of us. The Spirit of God. So if it were up to me, if it were up to me, I, I would be the biggest voice of encouragement that you've ever seen this side of heaven. I would speak a hundred words of encouragement for every criticism. And for those of you that I've criticized, I'm so sorry. If it's one-on-one, one-to-one, my apologies. <laughs> I'm trying to change too. And if you're here this morning and you just need some encouragement, man, that this, there's something going on in your life, and there is, and it's big, and it's a heck of a lot, and you want to experience the true power and the true presence of God to carry you through, I want you to know that you have a God who's for you, and He loves you, and He believes in you, and He's walking with you, and He will give you the strength. And don't, don't rely on your own strength. Rely on Him, and dig into His Word, and speak to Him, and cry out to Him, and talk to yourself. Oh, my soul, why are you so downcast? Come on, there's power, there's strength in the Spirit of Christ inside of you. you got this. Not because you got it, because He's got you. And He's there. So speak words of encouragement to the people that God has placed around you. And speak words of encouragement to yourself, okay? And know that I love you. (laughs) Let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for thank you for the gift of your of your Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us. Father, will you give us insight to the words of truth, from the voice of truth, from you, Father, from your word directly from you into our hearts, Father. Will you strengthen us, Father? Will you encourage us? And then give us the courage to encourage those around us. Father, may our lives be different 
because of your word. Thank you, Father, for that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. In Psalm 19, it says this, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Hey, if you're here this morning and you haven't had the opportunity to give your life to Christ, you, you haven't taken that bold step of saying, Jesus, I'm yours, please forgive me. I mean, I'd love to pray with you. I'll be in the back with a couple of elders. We'll be back there and I'd love to pray with you. And if you just need to take the next step in your faith journey, please meet us back there and let's do that together. Um, and we're going to sing a song that, that, that has so much truth. All right? And whether you're a singer or not, I want you to sing this out loud because these words are truth, okay? So let's sing together, um, and I look forward to a a beautiful noise. (laughs) Let's do this together. Love you guys.
this is my son. His name is Ikaya. And um, his daddy loves this boy, right? And your daddy loves you like this. Take this image. I know you've got struggles, you've got hardship, you've got things going on in your life. Will you, if you take it to the Father, and this boy's saved. He's not going anywhere. You know what I mean? His dad's got him, right? Your Father in heaven loves you unconditionally. I know we mess up. He loves us, right? that be an encouragement to you? And then will you take that encouragement? And will you share it? Will, will your home be different this week because of God's word? Will your workplace be different this week? Will your relationship with your in-laws and your parents and with your neighbors and with your co-workers and with people that you run into on a daily basis, will they be different because of God's word? Are you going to change because of God's word? Can we, can we do that? I, th- I think it will transform your life and the life of those around you, okay? Amen? All right. Go in peace. Love you. Cheers.